We've had so many inquiries since we aired the sexual dysfunction episode that we've asked Dr. Mark Opperman and Sister Elise to come back again to chat more about this topic and how they treat the patients who are dealing with sexual dysfunction. Welcome back to both of you. Mark, I think we're going to start with you just to give us a, a quick recap around sexual function so that we can launch into the treatment of it. Michael, when we look at sexual dysfunction, it can be one of two major causes. So we look at the mental side where you have low libido or decreased sex drive. And then the physical side uh, with physical manifestations, for instance, vaginal dryness or uh, dyspareunia, what in our terms it's called uh, discomfort or pain right. during intercourse. Okay. So let's, let's start with um, the higher function, and that would be libido and um, sex drive that's right. decreased. So that's the mental side of That's the, the mental side. And these usually come about because of changes in our hormone systems. So there's a condition that we've described as hyposexual desire disorder. And the best way to treat that is with testosterone. Mm -hmm. um, where we use testosterone to increase sex drive. It's the most effective way of doing this. Um, other forms of sexual dysfunction that include or, or will include the mental function side would be sexual dysfunction in a partner, for instance, which we spoke about at length in one of the yeah. previous episodes. For us, um, bringing about balance in hormone systems is where we usually start. Okay. Um, physical signs and um, physical effects will lead to a decreased libido because if something is not nice, I'm going to start avoiding it. Yes. And that leads to decrease in sex drive, right, for instance. Right. Let's talk about some of the, the, the treatment solutions that we'd be considering for the physical sexual dysfunctions that people are dealing with. Okay, in our practice we deal with the physical side by um, using platelet-rich plasma treatment. Right. Um, as well as um, Kegel exercises, etc., that goes hand in hand with okay. this treatment. So, what we do with the PRP treatment, we call it also the Renew Shot um, for the ladies in our practice, uh, is where we draw their own blood. Um, then we put it in a centrifuge where it, the red blood cells and the serum and the white blood cells are separated, and then also platelets as part of the separation. Yes. Then we take that um, yellow part of the blood, which contains the platelets, and we re-inject it at certain strategic points in the vagina. Okay. Why do we do this is to rejuvenate and regenerate tissue in okay. the vagina. So it's really sort of a, so a, a hard hit of regenerative cells that you're put putting in there. Yes, it okay. because when you inject the, the plasma, the platelets sort of burst open and okay. releases growth factors right okay. and you get different growth factors growth factors that regenerate normal cells or any cell regenerate um, the vascular system regenerate the nervous system in that area right. as well as the um, lubrication system in the area so you're really kind of giving it a, a revitalizing boost Correct. basically okay. yeah right. that's right um, this takes time people mustn't think that they will immediately have a result mm. Um, we know that your cell turnover is 28 days. So we give it, say, 28 days, and then you will see an improvement And already. is this an ongoing procedure, or is it a one-off? Well, we do it every 28 days okay. for three times. Right, right. Okay. And then we say we will maintain it once a year. Right. Um, just the maintenance dosage. Okay. It's amazing the results, the the group the gratitude of these mm. patients when they come back and say it's working even after the first one. Yeah. So directly after this procedure, um, the people can go, the ladies can go back to work, to their normal activities. Okay, so it's non-invasive. It's non-invasive. Non we do numb the um, certain areas in the vagina for to make sure there's no discomfort. Okay, okay. okay. This, is, this is really a comfortable procedure, Michael, but what makes platelet-rich plasma so phenomenal is that it comes from you. So it's incredibly safe. Mm. You can't overdose on this. So 
um, when Elise says that we do three, our protocol starts with three, but some patients would start seeing phenomenal results after just one tree. Yes, yes. Others might require four or five. It, de it depends on um, the metabolic state of the body, how well you're going to re regenerate tissue. It's going to um, be dependent on your diet. It's going to be dependent on lifestyle. For instance, smokers will regenerate tissue much slower right. because the fibroblasts, et cetera, et cetera, that are responsible are being made lazy, mm. if I can call it that way, or deactivated. And we break down tissue because of the free radicals from smoking, et cetera. Yes. So I think it's important. You, we've often spoken with the two of you about the, the holistic view of any sort of treatment that um, somebody would engage with. It's not about fixing the things that you've broken, it's about fixing those things, but also changing the, your lifestyle so that you're not breaking things anymore. When we spoke in the previous episodes about compliance and adherence, um, being compliant is taking your medication and that's it. Mm. Adherence is buying into the process, which include lifestyle changes. Right. In our practice, we start with a global um, look at what is the cause of this and therefore we like to combine regenerative medicine with hormone optimization, mm. um, bespoke nutrient supplementation and that can be s uh, supplements that we send you home with, it can be supplements that we do intravenously, it can be supplements that we apply Vaginally, Elise uses a, a, a system that's specifically formulated for um, vaginal atrophy um, and mucosal atrophy in the vagina. And now this can include hormone optimization or not, again, through different modalities, okay. injectables, transdermal, intravaginal, mucosal, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So Elise, you've got the, the physical interventions and then w Mark spoke about the hormonal optimization as well. When do you decide which one is important or which one to start with or would you always go hormone optimization and see what clears up and then move into a more um, physical intervention? I think we we approach it holistically and we will have a look first uh, to see symptoms uh, biochemistry etc etc but the ideal is to to do this to treatments or whatever treatment concurrently okay. so that you can get faster to the point where you feel right. okay this is working for me okay uh, but it all depends from patient to patient right. what we suggest okay or, um, again not a one-size-fits-all solution no. No. michael there are other things that are related to sexual dysfunction so these can be um, surgical procedures that have been performed um, this can be related to normal childbirth. Mm. So episiotomy scars, for instance, can be incredibly painful. And, you know, it, this can be in a woman that's young. So she doesn't need hormone optimization. Yes. She doesn't need vaginal rejuvenation, or, um, but she needs treatment of a scar tissue that is there. And we can do that through neuromodulators, inject it into the area, et cetera, et cetera. One of the things that Elise diagnosed routinely on our patients when we do our internal examinations is some sort of prolapse. Okay. Either that it's a prolapse of the um, posterior wall of a vagina, and then we start having a pushback from the rectum into that. It can be from a superior where your bladder starts distending. Now, rejuvenation therapy in the form of PRP um, not only rejuvenates the tissue in the vagina, but the surrounding tissues. Mm -hmm. So um, there's, there's a lot of conditions that are related with sexual dysfunction or cause sexual dysfunction. You need to have a global and holistic approach mm. to this. It might not necessarily be sex hormones that we need to uh, ad um, uh, address. It can be the thyroid hormone. It can be iron. Uh, it can be um, certain vitamin deficiencies. Um, so it's important, again, to, when treating this, have a clear understanding of not only 
the condition that the patient is having, but for the patient to have a very good understanding of what are the benefits versus the risks um, of treatment or the problem of not treating because yes. most of these things are progressive. Yeah. So Mark, again, you mentioned that holistic perspective and global outlook, but also it's interesting that you can go to the doctor and get a pill or, or something to hide the symptom, but it's not actually correcting it. So we're talking about processes to really fix what's going on, and it's fascinating to hear the detail of it. But if anyone wants to find out more, where can they get hold of you? The easiest to get hold of us on our website, www.theclinic.com. Elise always tells me that I have to say we're on Facebook. Good. Uh, <laughs> apparently yes. on Instagram as well, just <laughs> yes. don't ask me. And the number at the office is 010-824-1393. And if you want to book for um, Umschlange, that's where you get hold of us as well. Fantastic. Mark Elise, thank you so much. Thank Some you. Great information once again.